Hi folks, so today I thought I might do something a little bit different. Now this video is really going to be focused towards people who live in the UK because I'm going to be talking about uh, mobile phone carriers. Um, I've recently changed my mobile phone carrier, or to be more specific, I'm actually in the process of changing my mobile phone car uh, carrier, and I'd just like to sort of make a video reflecting a little bit on my experience. So the, the mobile phone carrier, carrier I was with is called GIFGAF. They're quite a well-known uh, mobile phone carri carrier in the UK. Um, I just thought I might just do a quick video. There's not going to be too much to this video really, uh, but just reflecting on, on my experience with them, which to start off with has been largely positive actually. Um, I can't really think of too much in the way of, of problems that I've had with GIFGAF. Would I recommend? I, I would recommend them to a lot of people. They're definitely not the cheapest carrier in the UK, but they're probably far from the most expensive as well. So I'm going to go through the price plans a little bit and talk a little bit about my experience with them because one of the reasons that made me switch is that they did actually put the price up on their pay-as-you-go tier. Now, I was not on their pay-as-you-go tier. I was on one of what they call a goodie bag tier where you pay a certain amount every month and you get unlimited calls, unlimited texts, and then a set amount of data. And because I use a fair amount of data uh, as part of my job, um, I actually ended up paying a higher tier for my data than I... Um, than I should have really. So anyway, I'm going to go back into the uh, I'm going to go into the website here that I've got, um, and this is just sort of the data plans that they have. So they start off with the golden. What I was actually paying for, I was paying for the always on 25 goodie bag, right? And largely, what I was paying for was the peace of mind of knowing that I could just use data. I could keep my data on. Uh, if I was stranded out in the middle of nowhere, I'd always have access to data. And, and it would be, uh, I think by and large around where I live, it was largely 3G that I was connected to, which was fast enough for mobile phone you know, usage. Um, I, you know, if I needed anything more serious, I'd just use a desktop or, or I, go, I go to my office or, or something to that effect, right? But just that peace of mind of knowing that I was, I, I was free to use as much data as I needed um, was what pushed me to, to pay for 25 pounds. In hindsight, that was actually a really bad deal that I was paying. Even if I'd have dropped it down by five pound a month, I was I was not even using anywhere near as much as, as 80 gig of data. In fact, on reflection, I could have actually got away with paying six pound a month. Most of my months were well below 500 megabytes of data. At the very most, I could have paid an extra two pound a month, two gig of data, and I'd have been completely safe. Honestly, Towards the end, I dropped it down to the six pound goodie bag and with no change in my mobile phone behavior, I was fine. Um, and uh, I can't really fault GIFGAF for that because I opted in for the tier. I wasn't even sold it. I chose it from a free list like what you see here. Um, and, uh, and I just wanted that peace of mind. There were some months when I started out um, that I was using a substantial amount of data and I was originally, before I was on the 25 always on tier, uh, I was uh, using the pay as you go tier and I was actually paying more than I ought to. So if you're going to go ever go with GIFGAF, I would highly recommend, especially if you use it to any regular degree, to look into the, the goodie bag options because they provide the better deal. The thing that actually pushed me to even look at different carriers was because uh, they put up the costs of phone and text for their pay-as-you-go tiers. In all honesty, GIFGAF don't really want to, um, it seems that GIFGAF don't really want to take on board pay-as-you-go uh, customers, which is fine, like £6 a month for a solid mobile phone tier with, and I can, you know, I can flesh out the details here, regular UK calls and texts included. This plan can be used in the EU and selected destinations, just like you use them at home at no extra cost. Uh, no contract. Uh, roaming outside, you know, it it it, it comes with the with the, you know, but unli unlimited UK calls and texts. That's the thing, right? You've got unlimited UK calls and texts on the six six pound plan. Uh, Twenty five unlimited UK calls and texts. If you 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 know, if you if you're call, if you call and text a fair bit, and um, you know, as in terms of the, or shall we say, values and, and and policies of the channel, you know, texting is not one. You know, it's one of the better ways of, of 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 text communication by and large it's not necessarily federated like it would be with with something like mastodon or with with matrix or anything like that but at the end of the day you do get to choose your mobile phone carrier and you can take your number from carrier to carrier which is quite good so when it comes to it 
uh, SMS. And there are actually uh, options for encryption. Uh, on this channel, there is a video where I talk about the Silence SMS Messenger, uh, which does allow you to encrypt your SMS text messages. Uh, it does require the other person to have silence, but it uses SMS. It doesn't use the internet um, unless you have SMS over the internet, uh, in which case... Um, but yeah, when it comes to SMS, you do have uh, a substantial number of options that you might not necessarily have with centralized messaging services like with WhatsApp, like with Telegram. A lot of what you do there is at the mercy of uh, a centralized service. Now, there are pros and cons to that, but SMS is, it's not bad. It it it, it seems to straddle a number of, of, of positives in, in the whole, you know, what we're looking for kind of thing. And, and there are worse, worse options. Obviously, it depends on your requirements in regards to encryption and availability, but by and large, it's it's one that I use quite a bit. Now, obviously, it's going to be up to you as to whether or not which, which monthly deal that you're looking at, uh, at getting. But <laughs> for me, you know, I feel a bit silly in regard, you know, in, in, in hindsight that for, a, for well over a year, I was paying £25 a month when really I could easily have been getting away with... with, with uh, six pound a month now i don't like to use for example what uh, public wi-fi it's typically a, a security risk and and you know you can never really be sure uh as to either the quality or the security or any other factor of it you're you know you're sort of taking your digital life in your hands when you you do use public wi-fi so it's always best to use you know whatever you can uh you know afford to spend with your own money i mean if it's free the chances are you're the product or at least you're you know, in someone else's house on someone else's terms, as it were. Um, this nine gigabyte, uh, ten pound a month, nine gigabyte of data, unlimited UK calls, uh, UK room included, no contracts. That's, that's a pretty good deal. If you can, you know, if you want to stretch to ten pound a month, you're going to be hard pressed to use more than nine gig of, of data, unless you're you're a high velocity user. In which case, the twenty five, always on data plan for twenty five a month. That's not a bad uh, plan if you're using in excess of eighty gigabytes of data. So you've got to be watching quite a lot of Netflix on your phone, if that's the thing. If you're traveling from on the road, you know, hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel, 25, um, or if you live on a campsite or something, I don't know, if you live in a caravan or something like that, then maybe, uh, yeah, that, that, that might be a, a plan for you. But uh, yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, for £6 a month, 500 megabyte of data for most people, that would be fine. And, and the one above that is even finer. So, you know, um, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between the six gig data here um, and the the golden goodie bag is that a special offer? Um, oh right, okay. So I think the stipulation for this, judging from the text at the bottom here, is that you need to have that as a recurring plan because what you can do is you can buy a plan. You buy your plan a month at a time, but if you select your your plan to be recurring, you can then opt in for this ten pound golden goodie bag, where you can. Um, uh, Get get a few more gigabytes of data. Uh, so in terms of coverage, GIFGAF used the O2 network, which is a, co a network with good coverage. Nowadays, it seems the two major uh, networks that cover us, the O2 network and the EE network, both seem to have pretty good coverage. I don't live out in the middle of nowhere, but I certainly don't live in the middle of a big city. So I would imagine that my experience is probably quite typical of a lot of people. Um, in which case, zero complaints uh, in, in that regard. Another thing that I will say is that it was actually quite easy for me to move my number across to my new provider as well. They were more than happy to facilitate that. No no qualms whatsoever. I went on their website. I requested uh, what you call is the PUK number. I think that's the number that you need to, it's, you know, it's a, it's a special password that you need to transfer your number to another provider. They gave that straight away. No, you know, no questions asked. It was just a simple didn't need to ring any numbers, didn't need to do any of that. It was just that like they provided it. I think they even texted it over to me. Like it, all in all, I, uh, I I was very happy with GIFGAF. Um, what compelled me, uh, now I will say, I, I probably would advise against using GIFGAF as if you want a genuine pay as you go, pay per text, pay per minute on your, uh, on your phone. And on my new provider, I'm probably gonna end up getting a better deal even um, even still. I'm not the biggest mobile phone user in the world, so that probably should factor into things, but I'm certainly not the smallest either. Um, it wouldn't be a solid plan if you were, for example, on a Nokia 3310 like my old phone or a dumb phone, in which case you might very well be better off with a provider that specializes in the pay-as-you-go 
paper, text paper, minute of calls type of thing that don't really do much in the way of data. Uh, but in regards to, um, you know, if you're paying a, an amount every month, um, yeah, I reckon these are good deals. But um, I would like to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. All in all, even though I'm moving away from GIFGAF, it's not because I dislike them as a company. Uh, they've always been quite good to me. And I, it's not beyond their own responsibility that I might go back to them. They allow you to keep your own number. You can just order a SIM off the, you know, off the website as well if you wanted to get a new number. Their login portal, as in where you log in to do your accounts and do your recurring payments uh, and all that kind of stuff, very easy to use, very straightforward, zero issues with that whatsoever. Um, the only issue with uh, with GiftGaff that I have is that their their paper text paper. I mean, it's just a little bit on the pricey side. I think you're paying, if I remember correctly, and don't quote me on this, was like ten pound a text, ten pound a minute, ten ten pence a text, ten pence a minute, or something like that, which they recently raised. Don't quote me on that one because I don't use the pay as you whatever you know, pay as you go tiers. Um, but I do remember them being they're they're not the cheapest uh, available. Uh, what I will say though is, if you're looking at just paying for about six pound a month, not worrying about calls, not worrying about texts. Um, and, and 500 mega data, that's pretty good. Like you can browse Twitter, uh, you know, and, and you can, you know, use your Telegram, use your WhatsApp. You'd be fine on, on, on that kind of tier. If, if, if you're using WhatsApp, which uh, uses, a, of course, a data connection, WhatsApp would be fine on that. You, you know, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be fine. You'll be perfect. You'll be rosy. And let's face it, £8 um, a month is hardly a step up. Um, you know, well, it's, it's a little bit of a step up. There you go. So by and large, not a bad company, not a bad deal, good coverage, reasonably good prices, um, and I'm just leaving them, partly because I've been testing another mobile provider, and I'm c kind of keen to see what they're doing with their pricing structure, so I'll probably be talking about them in a future video, so I'm not quite letting on just yet. Um, I'm going to give, I have been testing it on a burner number, but the trouble is, of course, is that I don't have the day-to-day -day use of those, so I'm going to be trying it on my um, on, the, on the number I use with friends, family, work, and all that kind of thing. And seeing uh, where I uh, where I end up with it, um, yeah. I mean, do I recommend it, it under certain use cases? Definitely. Um, coverage good, prices are good. Um, uh, yeah, can't can't say I, I have any real complaints. The the user portal is um, is good. So um, all in all, I've never had to do much with the customer service. Uh, so I can't really comment on on that, but I just thought I might put together a little bit of video reflecting on my experiences because it might be useful to uh, to anyone watching. I do apologise for those of you who are not in the UK, uh, who don't, um, uh, who 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 to whom this information is not relevant. But you know, such is life. Um, and actually, just before I leave you today, I just want to let you know that. Um, I've uh, cracked open my Libra Pay account again. So if you guys want to support the content that I do on this channel and in on the internet in general, um, then I will put a link to librapay.com slash chrisware, that's the address, in the description below. Um, just because I find myself putting a little, substantially more time into making online content these days, I thought I might just have the avenue there if you guys wanted to support it. No obligation, nothing's going behind a paywall. Um, and um, Libra Pay, I'm choosing Libra Pay over, for example, Patreon or anything like that because it's an open source option. Um, so there you go, that's a thing. But yeah, no obligation, just thought I'd throw it out there um, because, um, well, I don't know, you might just uh, sort of ease the process along of, of, of creating the content. But like I say, I do what I do here because I enjoy it. It's a bit of a hobby of mine, but um, like I say, the more time I spend into it is the more time away from doing other things that, um, but uh, but you know I like it I like doing this so like I say I'm not like throwing incentives away uh, throwing incentives around there may be a time when I set like a like a, a collective goal and then I can do something cool with that collective goal um, but yeah and you can donate from as little as one pence a week or like one dollar a week or something like you know you can, it's it's like you can start off with very small um, amounts of that's one another thing I do like about Libra Pay is that with Patreon it's like a dollar a, uh, a dollar a month it's like quite a lot for just like a, for, for like content it just doesn't it just doesn't seem you know that's that's like it's a big step up from you know like a, a penny a week you know that you can you can pay on Libra Pay which seems like quite appropriate you know I'm not I'm not asking for a dollar a month or anything like that like it's um you know but you can you can throw up throw in a penny a week or something like that. Um, and that does add up. Like if there are a number, you know, if there are a lot of people throw in a penny a week, it's, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, but with, with Patreon, like yeah, like if you if you if you 
spending a dollar a month on someone that only puts out a video once a week that seems a bit bit pricey doesn't it you know it's, it's like you're going going from zero to, to one well sorry one dollar a month i don't know you know like if you compare that with um netflix or or or, or cable or anything like that like it's i don't know i i, I um i've recently moved a lot of my patreon stuff over to libra pay and I kind of noticed, like, I was paying quite a lot per month, um, because you can't you can't do the smaller smaller increments there, which I always feel is a bit. I get it because you have to pay like percentage costs of of to to banks to PayPal, Stripe, or whatever, whoever's processing your payment. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Bit of a ramble, anyway. Sorry about that. Um, but if you guys don't, you know, there's there's no um, requirement or anything like that. Don't feel in any way obligated. But anyway. Uh, that's about it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware. You've been awesome. Good luck.